Hello, welcome pen friends. My name is Chris and I'm back with another pen review. This is an early impressions video. So that means I haven't had the pen forever. I've had it for two months and this is the second fill. But this is a Retro 51 Tornado in the ultraviolet color. And you guys voted um, among three pens that I have wanted to do a review of that I'm ready to do an early impressions review. And this pen got a whopping 31 votes. So I'm excited about this because that means that several of you wanted to see this pen. And the other two will get done too, but this helps me prioritize by having that little vote. So what we'll do, we'll look at the pen, then we'll do some comparisons with some similar pens. Uh, and then we'll we'll look at writing samples and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about the pen. And um, hopefully that this will give you a, a good look at it. So let's start by just really looking at this pen. Um, I'm relying on this white paper to help with, with lighting. So hopefully that won't be too distracting, but we'll see. I do have this pen inked up with Diamine Amazing Amethyst, which is... A really nice ink. I only have it in sample and this is my second sample I've run through so I know that it's probably gonna it's gonna be one that I don't forget about. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So here's the pen and we'll start by just kind of looking at it's got that um let's see what did they say well we'll get into that in a minute. It, it's metal. It's definitely a metal pen and it has a clip on it and the clip is pretty tight. Let's see if we can get it up close so you can it's, it's pretty tight, but we'll talk about that later. <clears throat> and then here's the finial. It's got purple. It's got like a little, there we go. We can kind of show it the best there. It's got a little purple finial, but it's also got all this neat um, detail work. And I, I love that. It made me at first think of a thimble, but it's not shaped like a thimble. So it's just really gorgeous. And then it's got the trim here on the cap. And then the end of the barrel is sort of silver. Just regular. Whoops. I'd like to have it focus. Now it probably thinks it's supposed to go down onto that paper. So, wow, it's really something. Okay. Um, let's go ahead, though, and, and uncap it. It is a screw to, screw to cap. And it does post. <clears throat> and it posts very securely. But it's too heavy for me like that. I mean, I'd feel like I'd be working against it. So I don't post it when I write with it. <clears throat> okay, and then let's take a good look at the section. I have heard that they made changes and improvements to the section. Um, it, it's comfortable to me, and it's sort of comparable to the Genhow X750. Might be slightly smaller, but we'll go into dimensions when we get there. This does have a 1.1 millimeter stub on it. Okay, and it, you know, it's comfortable. There's a, a place there that my grip likes, and I, I haven't had any problems writing letters with it or anything I've wanted to do, so it's been really nice. Now, it has a converter that comes with it, or you can use standard international cartridges. I like this converter a lot and we'll talk about that some more as we go along but it's extremely smooth and I, I couldn't help but kind of compare it with my Lamy converters which sometimes I have trouble with like I have to make sure that I'm grab, grabbing both the converter and the section when I fill the Lamy's but this it was a nice uh, tight now Okay, let me correct myself there because I'm talking about the Lamy converter that has the black that goes so nicely uh, with my Vista. I'm not talking about the one that locks into place. That one, it's, it's darn steady. So I, I should correct myself. Okay, but back to this pen. <laughs> and it's Z something, but I can't remember which one. But it's the one, the black one goes so good with a, a clear... Uh, Lamy Vista, but we are doing the Retro 51 today, so I love this converter. It's just plastic, but it's a, it's so super smooth, and, and it feels nice and steady. Okay, and it screws on real nicely. Okay, so um, we'll get into measurements and all that when I get my other paper out, which is really going to be what I rely on. But what I thought I would do is do some comparisons to two other pens anyway. 
and I've got another white paper to help the camera, the poor camera, <laughs> uh, to, you know, kind of understand what it's supposed to do. So here we go. <clears throat> just put that to the side and hopefully it'll just be in our favor. Okay, so here's today's, the Retro 51. And then right away, of course, it makes me think um, somewhat of the Genhow X750, which is in a lower price range, even if you go ahead and add a Goulet nib or, or a, a, you know, another nib that's in the $14, $15 range. So this pen ends up being under $20, even with a replacement nib to it. But it's metal, um, and, uh, you know, it, but it doesn't screw. So this is a uh, push, you know, pull to uncap. My goodness. And the, the section may, it feels a little bit... Um, a little bit girthier but not by much so um, there's that and of course this is a cartridge converter pen as well <clears throat> and then it made me think right away of uh, the Conklin Durograph this is the Purple Knights because this is a screw screw to cap and it's in that same price range that mid-range for me which is the retro 51 is retails for $52 and I believe that the uh, Conklin Durograph is right in that ballpark it, it's very close um, I haven't been really happy with this particular nib on the Conklin but I understand from Goulet that they're, they're now putting uh, different nibs on them so you can't even go by that because this is a Conklin nib and I found it um, this particular one anyway very scratchy and it was upsetting to me it had too much feedback for me um, but it, it's the same kind of deal it's got a, a converter inside and but it's not a metal body so this is much lighter so I don't know that's just a little bit of uh, comparison uh, I did grab my Lamy Safari um, but you know it's that's out of it's it's so plastic. Of course, this is not uh, metal either, the Conklin. But uh, I did, you know, think of that in terms of size and everything. But it's totally different style-wise, and it's plastic. Whoops, I can see that ink in there. <laughs> anyway, we, we probably don't need to focus on that. So let's get let's get into um, the writing sample, and then I'll talk about what I really love about this pen and everything. So I've got well, first as we go to that. I wanted to show you uh, my first fill in this pen was was with um, Monteverde Sherat and it was a cartridge and I found that that ink it what it did was it, it wanted to bleed this is Tamori River paper this is 68 GSM Tamori River paper and it uh, it had quite a bit of bleed through on many of my papers and it also did a number uh, where it it feathered some. So what I thought was, okay, that's ink. That's got to be ink. Because I've used a lot of stubs and in the 1.1. So I knew that they didn't all do that. So then today, I was choosing the ink. And I, you know, at first I thought about using that ink that we're going to review next. The Rome Burning. But I really wanted a nice purple ink that really complemented this pen. And I ended up choosing Diamine Amazing Amethyst. And I think it was a good choice. I also think... It certainly didn't feather, and it didn't, uh, I don't believe it bled through. I don't remember it doing so. Uh, it tried to where I uh, painted it on with a paintbrush, but it, but the lettering part, the writing part, did not bleed through. So this is just a quick one because my actual writing sample is here. Um, I used the Hamlin Optic notebook for the writing sample part and, and this is all my my notes because to be honest I just don't remember things really well so uh, but the pen retails for $52 it, ha it comes with a steel nib a number six yo-wo nib and uh, and that standard converter that we looked at and they call it lacquered metal that it's made out of let me get that pen so we can kind of reference all I know is it's it's beautiful to me, it's it's really really nice. It makes me think of a brushed versus the uh, Gen Hao where it's it's quite glaring and uh, you know it, it's a different look as you can see. So um, the package, well, we need to look at that. So in a minute, let me I'll get the packaging. And I'll show you. It it doubles as a pen stand, which is so neat. And then this pen, of course, screws has a screw cap. 
and it weighs 34 uh, grams the total pen and that's what I'm interested in more more or less uh, I don't ever really post a pen unless it's absolutely necessary because I have small hands so I don't worry about that the length of it closed is 100 and 37.6 millimeters or five almost well like five and a half inches and then the length posted is um which i don't do is uh what 155.9 millimeters or uh, a little over six inches see that would make it really long and then i did write down the grip diameter this information came from goulet pens because i don't have the kind of uh, measuring sticks that you need for this is 9.1 millimeter so uh, that may that probably will mean more to you than it does to me. I just kind of go by feel and what it feels like to me. But here's a little writing sample that I did with our standard sentence. And I did it in both the cursive and the print because that always tells me quite a bit. Uh, pens can act really differently depending on whether I'm using cursive or print. I, I like the shading I was getting from this ink. It, it really was fun. Okay, now, down below here, I've got a bunch of pros and cons. Um, well, a bunch of pros, actually. <laughs> uh, I find this extremely smooth, the nib, and I find the pen to be really beautiful. And it feels real high quality to me. You know, everything looks well made, and I expect it to last for as long as, you know, as long as I do. <laughs> it's, it's in the affordable, but for me, the mid-range. It's not cheap, and it's not the most I've ever spent on a pen. But at $52, you know, I'd really, really think about a purchase. So uh, it's in that mid-range for me. And then the packaging is super, which I think we, we really ought to look at that soon, because I may forget, but I'll remember. Uh, the details on this pen are just really nice. Uh, I love that finial. I love the clip. It's different, you know. And I like how they did the trim on the cap and and on the the end of the barrel there it's whoops may not want to focus again because i'm playing tricks on it that's not fair for the camera um so then over on the con side i really don't these aren't cons for me but for some people they might be so i wanted to point it out the section is a little bit small um you know and i know that because it's it's comfortable for me, and it's probably on that end where much smaller, and it wouldn't be. But it does have a like a contour there that that helps you. But if you had really big hands, you might not be comfortable with it. And then the other thing that I noticed was I think the clip is quite tight, and I'm not sure that a, a gentleman or a lady could slip it into the pocket easily. But it it does have that little flare so that might help you and I'm not real experienced with clips but that's tight maybe it would loosen after a while um, but that's something for you to just think about um, and you know more about that than I do now the uh, well the Jin Hao I've had it a while and I don't think it's loosened though because I don't use it but it's got more to it where it might uh, help that fabric to you know to go on your shirt pocket or something I'm not sure I'm, that's out of my uh, league I think a little okay so I put down at the bottom would I purchase another retro 51 this was a gift actually this was a gift and I failed to say that right off the bat some of you haven't seen where I uh, uh, introduced it um, and I thank you so much to pen friend Banu who gifted this to me for my birthday I got it in February it was a late birthday gift and I just love it and I was shocked I was like I got this box from Goulet and I said oh, I didn't order anything and my husband looked at me with one eyebrow high like yeah right and I said no honest I didn't order anything because I'm going on this trip you know and we're pulling money from everywhere to make that happen so anyway it was just such a surprise but yes I would I would definitely buy another retro 51 product uh, if and when I have the money I, I would um, and they would make awesome gifts because they're packaged nicely. They're even, I'll show you the packaging now because I will forget if I don't get on, this, on the horse here. <laughs> okay, so some of you have seen a little bit of this because I did come on and, and show. But this is what it comes in. This kind of a cardboard uh, uh, packaging. It, it's really neat. It's got the... The little logo on the bottom and and uh, it says life is too short to carry an ugly pen made in Taiwan I don't know much about this company 
and I didn't take the time to do a whole lot of research right now because, you know, I, I, it's just, it would have stopped me. And I, I thought enough interest in this pen, I, I need to go ahead and get the, get this, uh, at least this early impressions video done. So um, then on the top, of course, it, it shows you it's the tornado and in the ultraviolet with a 1.1 millimeter stub. And then you open it up and you get this neat thing. Um, okay, you get some papers in there. And the converter was up in there too. And this it looks like a, you know, a colorful toilet tube. But <laughs> no, it's not, I'm not digging it for that. It's just interesting. Um, so let's look at this because this is what is so neat. You can just put your pen right in it. And that, that can be your little pen stand right on your desk. I love it. I just love it. That, that is so clever and it's not going to fall over. This will because it's lightweight. <laughs> but this is nice. It's got that like foam in there. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of got a foam. So that's really impressive. I mean, it, it's such a nice gift. Okay, you know, I'm thinking of it that way because uh, it, it's got this paperwork, which I thought was really neat to have. If you're giving it to someone who maybe doesn't have fountain pens, especially... Um, because in here it's, oh, look at this. Here's the research that I thought I didn't do. It says in 1997, Retro 50, 1951 introduced a pen named the Tornado in three colors, red, blue, and green in our classic lacquer coating. Little did we know the impact this retractable rollerball would have in the world of gifts and writing accessories. Since that date, we've added numerous styles and designs to the Tornado collection. They come in different colors, materials, sizes, and modes of writing. Rollerball, fountain, ballpoint, and mechanical pencil. Cool. We hope that you're proud of your tornado, not only for its smoothness of writing, but also for its style and design. We hope this pen will blow you away. Well, it does. It really does. I'll, I'll be honest. It does. So it shows you some other things that you can get. And um, then it has a little page, fountain pen care and maintenance. Well, that's really important to someone um, new to the pens. Like say if it was going to be a graduation gift, which I think it would be a great graduation gift or birthday present for a special child, grandchild, nephew, niece. And, and that's nice that some stuff is included because it's an introduction to it. And then it talks about the pencil and you know, most of the companies now don't take the time to put anything with it. And, of course, that probably keeps the cost down. But still, it's nice to have this. Um, you don't get that when you order a Gen Hao. You get a plastic sleeve, and that's fine. I'm perfectly happy with that because I know what to do with the pens. But it um, gives you a nice feeling that if you were giving it, they'd know what to do with it. So there's that. Okay. Um, yeah, I did want to talk about the fact that I noticed that they had a... A couple of different finishes that were very interesting like one was called Lincoln I think I think I wrote that down somewhere <laughs> but not right here and it, it looked really like um, vintage and then they had a one that had something to do with aviation which caught my eye I was in the Air Force it was really really cool and I've lost the notes and that's that's sad but if you look it up uh, on the link that I'm gonna link you to uh, Goulet pens then you'll see that there's three other color or there's three colors of this at least that they offer and and I found it for sale other places like Anderson pens and I think it was um, Gold Spot also had them so there's lots of places to get them and I just I think this overall for the price uh, considering the quality and everything of the pen it's definitely worth it in my opinion I've written with a lot of pens. Um, and I can definitely say that in that other class of pens, certainly like in the Conklin versus this, I, I just, I think, um, you know, maybe if I knew that the nib was going to be perfect, you know, like it is on this one, then I would go for another one of those. But this is a really nice pen. <clears throat> and so I wanted to show it to you. But not only that, but because you guys voted for it so enthusiastically, I knew that there was a lot of interest, but we'll be talking about the other two as well. We'll be doing, um, I'll be doing the uh, Caveco Perkeo, and I'll also be doing the um, Keiko Retro, which that was a little confusing when tabulating votes. Hopefully I didn't mess any up, but usually there was always a hint. If it said, 
retro uh, retro purple, then I knew that what you meant. And some people spelled it out exactly, so I couldn't go wrong. You know, retro fifty one tornado ultraviolet. <laughs> you know, but so I did my best. But it was such an overwhelming uh, vote for this one that I knew this would be first. So that you know, if I run out of time before my vacation, this is just a, a index card from. Um, Baron and Fig that I love. Uh, I've only got like three left, I think. But it's uh, got the five millimeter dot grid on one side, and then it's got the uh, blank on the other. And I just, uh, I've gone through two packages of 100. I love them. Uh, they show off the inks well. They work well with anything, and it doesn't bleed through. So, but I'm not reviewing that today. So what I wanted to, to show you a couple other things, but um, I'll tell you what's next in case anybody has to depart. I understand. Um, next will be the ink profile on Noodler's Rome Burning, and I will get it into a stub. I th it was quite a bit of mention of that. I'm not sure if it'll be the Retro 51, because I don't know anything about this ink yet and what it does to converters or anything. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just not sure. So I'll probably go ahead and stick with my usual roundup uh, of pens with it, but this will be next. And then um, I wanted to show you from today's ink... I couldn't resist it. Whoops, there went something. I couldn't resist it. I went ahead and did a, um, you know, visual journal on this uh, Diamine Amazing Amethyst. And I was really excited. This is a complex ink. It's got three different colors going on. It's got, you know, the purple, the darker, and then it's got pink. It's got blue. And this was just really quick, you know. Um, but you guys that have been seeing this know that not every ink does this. So I just thought I'd give you a quick glimpse of that. That was a lot of fun. And then I wanted to give a quick update on this. This is the G. Lalo paper pad, you know, tablet of writing paper that came with the March ink flight. And I hadn't been very complimentary toward this. I didn't quite like it because I felt the paper was bumpy. And it didn't work at all good with my medium nibs. It didn't work with um, what I was trying to write with for pen pal letters. So I was a little bit down on it. But now you can probably see that I have now used more than half of it. Now I'm going to be crying because it's going to be gone. But anyway, what happened was I found a perfect match. But I did go ahead and sacrifice a page today. So I wrote with uh, today's pen and ink up at the top there with the stub. I figured it would be good with that because it worked okay with the um, Monteverde Chirot too. Um, still, I'm not quite as happy with how that stub did on the paper. You see, I write so fast that I get disturbed by those bumps. But a couple of weeks ago, I discovered that Noodler's, my Noodler's Ahab with um, Black Swan and Australian Roses was a great match. It, it really is. And uh, it was wet enough writer, <laughs> of course, uh, that it did really well. So it was hasty of me to be like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to use this paper. Oh, my goodness. And that's my first, that was my first impression of this tablet. But now I see that it definitely depends on the nib and the pen and what's going on with, with it. Now, this takes the Black Swan and Australian Roses by Noodlers takes a long time to dry not as bad on this paper as it is on Tamoy River paper, but I'll show you if I can find it my blotter paper. Oh my goodness. This is what the blotter paper that sits by my desk looks like. I have to use both sides because I do like, what I'll do is I'll have my letter page done and I'll still like flop it around because I you don't even want to blot it immediately because if you do, you'll smear it just by blotting it. So I let it dry a little bit and then I do, you know, like the top and then I do the bottom. So, I mean, not everybody would have a time or be willing to do that, but but I really wanted to use the paper. It came in the ink flight box and it's pretty and it fits in my envelope so good. So hopefully that little update will help to correct, uh, you know, my negativity initially about G. Lalo um, tablet paper. And I think that that's everything. And this video is longer than normal. Oh, dear. So I'll be back with Noodler's Rome Burning. Thank you very much for being here. And let me know if you have experience with, uh, with a uh, Retro 51, any kind of product by them. I'm, I have a very favorable 
uh, impression of the company and, and the quality and everything from this gift. And thank you again to Pen Friend Banu. What a nice surprise. So um, I'll be back. And thank you so much for being here. Bye for now.